Hi there. Do you have an open mind? Do you, one, listen, two, consider the source, and three, study and inquire slash pray for yourself? Hi, my name is CK and I'm a Mormon. Just a shout out to any kid, young or old, viewing this video. Everything, is awesome. Everything really is awesome. That phrase will sound a little familiar to you if you've seen a well-written film called The Lego Movie. I definitely recommend it. It's a unique story told from the perspective of what someone playing with Legos might imagine. It's geared towards kids, so it has a bunch of teaching elements, including a song that its main phrase is, everything is awesome. I stumbled across a video recently that, interestingly enough, didn't have anything to do with the product, but it showed the values and the convictions of those that are in charge of this product. Anyway, I think that the message to take away from it is that you're doing better than you think. Everything really is awesome. When much of the world uh, visualizes profits, they just think of profits of doom. Yeah, like these guys. They can't or won't look past the mists of darkness that the adversary puts in their way. The stuff that's in their way of seeing the good messages, the uplifting things that God's true apostles and prophets have to say, just as I sh showed a few minutes ago. With all the hate, the wars and rumors of wars, immorality, Gideon robbers, just general confusion, it really is amazing that we still have a beacon of hope, a beacon of light to turn to, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Every person, young and old, has had his own personal experience with falling. Falling is what we mortals do. But as long as we are willing to rise up again and continue on the path toward the spiritual goals God has given us, we can learn something from failure and become better and happier as a result. My dear friends, there will be times when you think you cannot continue on. Trust the Savior and His love. With faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and the power and hope of the restored gospel, you will be able to walk tall and continue on. Now, I hate to bring this up so soon, but I think we all need to be reminded of the sort of thing that is mentioned in 2 Nephi chapter 28, verse 8. And there shall also be many which shall say, Eat, drink, and be merry. Nevertheless, fear God. He will justify in committing a little sin. Yea, lie a little. Take the advantage of one because of his words. Dig a pit for thy neighbor. There is no harm in this. And do all these things, for tomorrow we die. And if it so be that we are guilty, God will beat us with a few stripes, and at last we shall be saved in the kingdom of God. Remember those mists of darkness I mentioned earlier? It's a perfect way to describe how the world is in confusion and turmoil. And the angel spake unto me, saying, Behold, the fountain of filthy water which thy father saw, yea, even the river of which he spake, and the depths thereof are the depths of hell. And the mists of darkness are the temptations of the devil, which blindeth the eyes, and hardeneth the hearts of the children of men 
and leadeth them away into broad roads, that they perish and are lost. And the large and spacious building which thy father saw is vain imaginations and the pride of the children of men, and a great and a terrible gulf divideth them. The confusion is just going to get worse. But the interesting thing is, at the same time, it's just going to get better. It all depends on what you do. In my internet travels, I've come across some words of wisdom from a great girl that I've actually met who goes by I Justine. The negativity online and in life can be extremely hurtful. And at times, it can drive you to a place that you don't want to be. A place where you're presented with two choices. To be yourself, or to be the way that everyone wants you to be. But knowing that those passing the judgment on others are often fighting that same confused battle as you are, it can really help put things back into perspective. Bring the focus back to those who support, who care, and want the best for you, so that you can do the same for them. But now to wrap up this segment, there's a short experience I read over at LDS Living titled, Men Challenges Missionary About What Makes Him Happy. Elder's response is perfect. As our son is serving a full-time mission for the church, we have strived to study Preach My Gospel as a family and learn the teachings that he is sharing with our brothers and sisters in the Georgia Atlanta mission. Preach My Gospel says, many of these people are searching for purpose in life. They are concerned for their families. They need the sense of belonging that comes from the knowledge that they are children of God, members of His eternal family. They want to feel secure in a world of changing values. They want peace in this world and eternal life in the world to come. But they are kept from the truth because they know not where to find it. This statement was powerfully illustrated when our son, Elder Schobinger, shared the following story with permission. My companion, Elder Diamanchi, and I visited a recent convert's house was baptized two weeks prior. When we arrived, we began to talk to her about the blessings of General Conference when her brother, who was obviously drunk, walked into the room. In the blink of an eye, Elder Diamanchi got up from where he was seated and jogged over to this guy and enthusiastically said, Brother, how are you? Here, sit down. Sit down. This is incredible. We are just telling your sister about prophets of God and the miracle they have been in each of our lives. This man, nicknamed Snoop, sat down and began using the most profane language I have ever imagined. Lovingly but firmly, Elder Diamanchi turned to him and said, Brother, stop doing that. That is not what makes you happy, and it does not make me happy either. This man looked at Elder Diamanchi and said, It does. It does make me happy. I love drinking and girls and chew. I love it, and it does make me happy. Elder Diamanchi looked him straight in the eyes, and literally, with the boldness of a Benedite, said, Snoop, I know that does not make you happy. I know that you fall asleep at night thinking about your life and how unhappy you are. You drink away your problems. You have never been happy. Let me tell you what will make you happy. Going to church will make you happy. Reading the scriptures will make you happy. Respecting girls will make you happy. Suddenly Snoop stopped dead in his tracks of profanity and somberly said, I know, you just pinpointed me. I need what you have, help me.